so winter uh, morning and today we are starting off our course eco 703a in a proper way so first is the linear algebra module as i told you linear algebra is a crucial thing and has to be understood very clearly and i appreciate that those who are attending this course would have uh, uh, at least a basic knowledge of geometrical vectors two dimensional vectors that you have studied possibly in high school or even in your first year undergraduate uh, math programs so uh, i hope you won't mind me just sipping a bit of chai so these notes would be available to you naturally they would be up in the course uh, portals so any uh, two dimensional vector starts from say the origin in the xy plane you have a coordinate system and it goes up to a point that any point in the two dimensional space is given by two real numbers called the coordinate of that point so that particular point actually you are you are moving from zero towards that point so that particular point is describing that vector so any coordinate any point on the two dimensional plane which is often called as r2 cartesian product of r with r that is called a vector so any two dimensional vector is always represented by two real numbers so that is the meaning of this so you you are moving a vector you learned in school is something which has a magnitude a length here and the direction and where you stop the vector the movement the where you stop it that position is the tip of the vector so this is called the tail of the vector the origin and this is called the tip of the vector that tip can be represented by a pair of real numbers and that's that's what it is uh, that's uh, that's the thing that is happening in the case even if you take three dimension you have three pair of real numbers so in general when you come to rn n dimensional system when n dimensional space then every point every vector is represented by n real numbers so in some sense we can call them a space of vectors or vector spaces so real line the num the two dimensional plane the three dimensional space these are all which we can call vector spaces or spaces of vectors so here there are two crucial operations what you can do is you can take a vector you can play with it by stretching it you can shrink it you can change its direction this is something called a scalar multiplication and also that you learn in the very beginning of any uh, mechanics or physics class is the addition of two vectors you add two velocities you add forces and all those things so you know how to do add geometrical vectors so here as i told you that uh, here rn is something which every point has n coordinates and this is the way you add geometrical vectors i'm not getting into the nitty gritty details of it you can you see the notes you can learn from it and so what you do if you take two vectors which whose so there are suppose we have two vectors on r2 the two dimensional plane v1 and v2 so v1 is represented by two coordinates and v2 is represented by two coordinates so when you add them up the new v vector v1 plus v2 has a coordinate whose first coordinate is the sum of the first coordinates of v1 and v2 and the and also is the sum of the second coordinates of and the second coordinate is the sum of the second coordinates of v1 and v2 so that's simple so you can just extend this idea directly to higher dimensions so i have already used the word dimension though we will use the word, we will define the term dimension in a proper way but this is just for you to uh, take care of the take care of this whole thing that we need to really concentrate on this fact now uh, here I, this is an explanation of stretching and shrinking so you take a real number alpha suppose you take make alpha strictly bigger than 0 and you multiply take alpha greater than 1 then you increase the length of the vector so the the vector length is increased but the direction is same 
or you can also shrink it down keeping the direction same but your length is decreased or if you multiply by a negative number then the length actually gets if you multiply by a negative number then the length actually remain either increase or decrease doesn't matter it might just it will just turn in the opposite direction the direction of the vector will change but it will lay, lie along the same line of the original vector that you have chosen so the same idea can be taken over to you know higher dimensional spaces if you have two uh, elements v and w in rn v has coordinates v1 v2 v n w has coordinates w1 w2 w n then if you add these two vectors because now you cannot geometrically see them after r3 in a three dimensional space to some extent r4 then geometry is replaced by algebra right so that is why algebraic viewpoint or if you can say analytic viewpoint are very important so that is why it's called linear algebra the algebra of vectors vector spaces and a special kind of function called linear functions working on them so that's why this subject is called linear algebra because here your dimension is higher but it, here everything is flat there is no curvature as gilbert strang one of the greatest linear algebra teachers in the world possibly the greatest says that there is no kind of uh, curvature so that way it's but it's computationally intensive certain times but concepts are beautiful if you understand the very basic concept of linear algebra which will soon come is a concept called linear combination and that uh, is the fundamental and based on which you can build up whole of linear algebra and that's what we will come so the scalar multiplication of a vector what you see is that if you have a vector v in two dimension which is has coordinates x1 and x2 then you have uh, when you multiply it by some alpha some scalar here here by a scalar i'll mean a real number right so then alpha the new code new vector has coordinates alpha x1 alpha x2 so the same idea can go on to higher dimensions so once you know things for two or three then pushing into higher dimensions is a kind of a general weekend exercise so you don't have to worry about it there are, so it's not that we always have vector spaces which are familiar to us we can have vector spaces which are not so familiar to us at the same time the scalars that we use are not always real number the scalars can also change so scalars come from a setting which is called field but specifically because this is largely for econ students i'll not press on to the mathematical idea of field axiomatic structures of that and all these things i'll just try to avoid as much as possible so here is a space of n fold space of complex numbers cn so here every point is represented not by n real numbers by n complex numbers in rn every point is represented by n real numbers here every point is represented by n complex numbers okay so here every zi that you see is actually a complex number xi plus iyi where i is root over minus 1 which you have studied in your uh, when you start start studying complex numbers and uh they might look very unreal but they are real and if you think that complex numbers suddenly arose because somebody had the desire to solve equations of the form x square plus 1 equal to 0 no nobody had that desire to so nobody had the desire to prove that there there is they people know that there is no real number whose square is negative so nobody had desires to prove such things like that it came out while trying to solve cubic equations so under square root negative numbers were automatically coming so then there was a attempt to give meaning to these uh, quantities and then this whole idea started same ideas will again go down as per addition and com uh, complex numbers and scalar multiplication is uh, addition of complex vectors and scalar multiplication is concerned but here the scalars are complex numbers here when i multiply alpha with v v here this alpha that i have is a complex number that could be a real number also real number is a one whose imaginary part is zero yi is zero then that will be a real number so it's a very bad scenario outside today it's raining heavily and kind of so i had to put the heater on <laughs>
pretty cold. So this uh, R or C, the field of scalars, is called. It's often called the field of scalars, and I'll just call it. So some names you will, you have to get uh, uh, accustomed to. There is a famous saying of John von Neumann. So there is a little story that I want to tell you that you know he actually, somebody, uh, some young student asked his teacher that uh, I can't solve this equation, PDE. So he said, why don't you go and ask uh, John von Neumann? It's when it was in Princeton. So he finally could uh, find John John von Neumann, the great mathematician, dancing away with a beautiful lady in a party, and he goes and tells Professor Neumann, is there any way to solve this problem? He looks at it in one glance and says, okay, just use the method of characteristic. Then when he finally solved the problem using the method of characteristics, he goes up to von Neumann and says, Professor, I have, thank you, I have solved it using the method of characteristics, but I don't really understand or appreciate what is the method of characteristics. So he said, you don't understand things in mathematics, you just get used to them. So to start with, of course you need to understand things in mathematics at a certain level, but to start with them, you get used to certain terminologies. You start working with them. You know that in our scenario, we will be only working with vectors which are real entries. Complex entries usually are handled by physicists. For example, quantum mechanics is filled with vectors where the entries are complex numbers. There, your scalar has to be a complex number. So when the entries are only real number and you are not bothered with complex numbers at all, then the scalars are complex numbers. Because the key idea here is the following, that if you add two vectors in Rn, they must produce me an element in Rn. If you have a scalar multiplier vector in Rn, they must produce me a vector in Rn. But if I take, if I multiply a vector in Rn with a complex number, then all these will become complex numbers, so it will not remain in Rn. So this is the key property of vectors or vector spaces, spaces of vectors, it's called the closure property. So if you take two vectors from a given vector space and add them, that should produce a vector, a new vector must remain in the same space. So that that is why you need uh, these uh, things basically. So vectors, we will usually write them as column vectors. So if V is a vector in Rn, then I'll write them in a column form, V1, V2, dot, 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 Vn. V1 on the top, then V2, the first component on the top, the second component followed by the third and ending with the nth component. But you can write them as a row. Then we say that we have transposed the vector and we write it as V transpose. So suppose you have a vector V1, V2 in R2, then V transpose is the row vector V1, V2. Many people work with row vectors, many people work with column vectors, but it's standard in linear algebra is to use column vectors. Maybe if I go and tell you, look at the book of Gilbert Strang here, just to have a look, uh, just to tell you, just to show you. So the vectors that they have been using are essentially column, so I can't show you, there's not much light. The vectors they have been using are actually column vectors. You may use row vectors also and do a similar sort of things. It's not a big deal. Answers would be similar. But uh, you have to really uh, get on to one particular tradition. But the tradition is to use column vectors and we will just go with that. Mm -hmm. The space Rn is uh, often called a commodity space in economics. Commodity space in the sense that uh, you... So if you take a point x1, x2, xn, each... Uh, po position represents some commodity. Suppose you, you want to buy some commodity, so that you, have, you are buying say rice or dal or something like that, then those com commodities would be non-negative. If you are buy, selling something, you could be a seller also because a, con a consumer need not be always just consuming, he can be also selling, right? Because a, a seller can also be a consumer, right? So I can have some, so for example, one thing could be labor. I'm giving labor to get money, right? So I'm selling labor worth that money. So I can buy something which I'll take as positive, non-negative, and which is, or I can sell something which I'll take as non-positive. So that is why the space of all commodities is called a commodity space, right? So... I'll just uh, drop my picture for the moment and I'll just 
just uh, put the thing bit more so that you can see it better. So I think uh, running the video creates a little problem because of the uh, drop in, I don't know, some issues there. So anyway, this is a better way because now you have heard me there, now you can see me so you can actually uh, look into this. So, so Rn, the space Rn has an has an important role it's called commodity space so if you i'm just a consumer who is just consuming and not selling anything then all my elements would be non-negative so that will that will be in so-called the non-negative orthenta warren right so if i had three a three commodities in the market and if i'm just buying all of them all my commodity my commodity bundle would be in the first orthent or non-negative orthent which you understand so using the Pythagorean theorem repeatedly you can prove that the length of a vector v given the coordinates v1, v2, vn is expressed through this fact. This is this, this is actually called the norm of v. It's called the distance of a point from 0. So if I have coordinates v1, v2, vn then v1 minus 0 square plus v2 minus 0 square plus vn minus 0 square is the square of the length of the vector. Uh, is, a, is a square of the length of the vector which will give you this actually to be very true to prove that this is the length you really can actually start coming up by using induction so you can prove a thing for two dimension then you can prove it for three dimension you can assume it for k minus one dimension and then prove it for k dimension or n minus one dimension prove it for n dimension so that will be the length of the vector so and so if I can multiply two numbers, real numbers, and because we have stacked up, uh, you know, real numbers and calling them vectors, what is the meaning of multiplying two vectors? And this is where we introduce what is called the inner product of two vectors. And the first part of our talk would be up to uh, this intro definition of inner product or dot product. So the inner product has several symbols, V dot W, if V and W are two elements in Rn, where V1, V2, Vn and W1, W2, Wn are basically these uh, commodities, means in the, in the sense that uh, these are basically uh, this, uh, sorry, these are basically commodities, you can say, these are for economic student, these are the components. So what do I mean by multiplying these two vectors? So that is what is called inner product. It has several symbols like this. V dot W called the dot product also is equal to V transpose W equal to VW. And then uh, there you have the definition is that what you do is multiply the first component of this which are real number with the first component of W, first component of V multiplied with first component of W, you get V1, W1. Then do V2, W2, add it to that. Then do V2, W2, add it to that original sum. So basically you multiply the individual vectors and add I mean, individual components and multiply all of them up. First component of V with first component of W, second component of V with second component of W, nth component of V with nth component of W and add all of them up and that's uh, that's it and that's the definition so there is an immediate conclusion that if i put v w equal to v then no, this will become v1 square plus v2 square plus vn square so norm of v square is nothing but the inner product of a vector with itself or the norm is nothing but the because it's the length i'll take the positive square root of the inner product of a vector with itself. So that's a very, very important concept too. There is a link between the norm and the inner product. So kind of multiplication of a number with itself and its length is linked. Multiplication of a vector with itself and a number is linked. Of course, you can say, okay, I we have read about uh, cross products in physics and also can there be such requirements here? So, so there are many kind of products. We will talk about there are things like tensor products and all those things, but we will not get into those things. We won't have time to do that. But there are many other products. But this is a very basic one. This is a very basic and very intuitive one. 
first so we'll talk about inner products only in rn we are not talking about inner products in cn so inner products in cn would be a detour and not uh, a, a, a mainstream learning because we will hardly have time to talk about complex matrices so here as we will see we will introduce uh, two inequalities after telling you the important uh, properties and then we will stop and in the next part of the lecture so this whole lecture one is broken up into two parts one a one a and one b and so in the next part of the lecture we will talk more about inner products about its structures and all those things so here the properties of the inner products are the first property is v w the inner product of v with w is same as inner product of w with v it's a symmetry so the next one is very intuitive see these are all you have to write the definition why this is true because this is commutative this is commutative because multiplication of real numbers is commutative a into b is b into a so if i multi the i can write this as w1 v1 plus w2 v2 to into w and vn so that's exactly it simply means that the same as vw which is an obvious when you are in rn the next property is u plus v if that vector new so u and v are two vectors you add them so you get a new vector you take an inner product with w it is same as taking the inner product with w with u first and inner product of w with v and then add them up this is exactly called the distribution property distribution of multiplication over addition because here you will have v1 plus u1 plus v1 into w1 so it, then you can multiply that will be u1 w1 plus u1 v1 and club them off so when they they say so they will separate off so you can prove them easily it's not a very big it's a very simple exercise so you have alpha v, alpha v of w if you multiply a scalar multiply vector v and then take a inner product with w is same as taking it with v w and then multiplying the whole thing alpha that is taking the inner product of v with w the same thing it is same as actually scaling up w with the same factor alpha then taking the inner product with v these are all coming out from very very basic definitions here that's all nothing else just by commutative commutativity of an associativity of multiplications right or, or you can say or commutativity in some whichever whatever you want to use it it will give you it will give you uh, the result the idea is that if you multiply a inner product with itself that value would always be mul multiply sorry if you if you have a inner product of a vector v with itself that value would always be greater than equal to 0 because it is equal to norm v square so that statement i have not written but the key fact is that if a vector v is 0 and you take its inner product with itself then you will get the inner product to be equal to 0 and uh, uh, if the inner product is 0 then v must be 0 because if you take the inner product of v with v you will get v1 square plus v2 square plus vn square equal to 0 so here is a sum of some non negative numbers which add up to 0 they, this cannot be true unless all of them are equal to 0 so v1 square equal to 0 v2 square equal to 0 vn square equal to 0 so each of them are individually 0 and here is just the opposite of what i did here just it's the same thing kind of so key important inequalities which come up very frequently in many calculations is the use of triangle inequality basically it's a idea that you already know in geometry that the sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third right so suppose you have a vector uh, u which is one side of a triangle another vector w which is another side of a triangle and then you take then u plus w the sum vector would be the other side of the triangle so the, but of course you can ask why that it is not strictly less because in real geometry in plane geometry it is strictly less sum of two sides of a triangle is strictly bigger than the other side length of the other side the sum of the length of the two sides of a triangle is always bigger than the third this strictness is not there because you can take u to be equal to zero or w to be equal to zero or one is a multiple of the other then equality might just come equality will come you put u equal to 0 w equal to 0 then what happens then there's equality or if you take uh, 
um, w equal to lambda of u then what would happen so that's that's the kind of uh, thing so then 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 equality will come so we have not discussed what kind of properties norm must have but uh, we know we have an idea of norm means length and this is that idea from the triangle that we have written here with additional fact that there would be an equality here but there is a very interesting result which many of you possibly know called the cauchy schwartz inequality which links the inner product and the norm which says that if you take two vectors v and w take the inner product then the, that number could be negative positive zero whatever then the modulus value the absolute value is less than equal to the product of the norms of the individual vectors this is a key result that the inner product value of two vectors is always lying between norm u and norm w and minus norm u and norm w so u v u w is less than equal to norm u norm w is greater than equal to minus norm u minus norm w this will always happen it will always remain within these two numbers so that's a beautiful result it tells you that given an u and a, 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 num, a vector u and vector w even if you don't compute the inner product if you just know the length of the vectors you can immediately tell between which two numbers your inner product value will fall which is a very fast estimate of inner product which is a good idea so that's that's what cauchy schwartz inequalities and this is one of the key inequalities used in many 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 places that is that that's why it's so famous it's 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 used all over all over so we will uh, uh, usually a vector u is called a unit vector if norm u is one so we will end it here and we will start discussing the link between the angle between two vectors and in a, in a product and that will be very interesting and thought provoking and that will come in the next lecture and so i thank and close the first part of lecture one